If you want to be a good werewolf, it's not enough to just look the part, to act the part. You also have to talk the part. The lexicon for the werewolves is extensive. It is absolutely gargantuan. It's full of words that us mere humans just don't use in our day-to-day -day lives. The werewolves are generally considered to be simple-minded murder hobos who don't think much of anything. Dullard rage machines. Werewolves often stand on tradition. They often stand on pomp and circumstance. And let's not forget they know how to tell a good story. It's how they tell their story, the way that a guru weaves their tale of glory, heroism, or even loss. Today, I will be covering most of the common words that are used throughout the Guru Nation. What I'm not going to do is touch on each of the tribe verbiage. Every tribe has their own way of speaking. They have their own language and words for things. So do the rest of the Pharaoh. This video should also inspire you because we've got a release date for Werewolf 5th Edition. If you're looking for more information on that, there'll be a link in the description below. Let's teach you how to speak like a werewolf. Quick side note, I have tried to organize some of these words at least together, so some of them will be out of alphabetical order, but my script is 11 pages. Anthelios is a red star, a mysterious celestial body that kind of appeared in the night sky during the week of nightmares. Known as Wormwood to the vampires, Anthelios to the werewolves, which means anti-sun. However, no matter what supernatural or what name they use for the red star in the sky, it is generally perceived as a negative, a sign of the apocalypse. If you really need me to describe that word, the apocalypse is the term used by the werewolves for the end times. The Guru believe that the inevitable catastrophe that is the apocalypse is something very bad that's going to happen to Gaia and no one knows what that is. Oftentimes, the werewolves are referred to as their auspice. Auspice is the sign of the moon which they were born under. For the Guru, there are five auspices, five different cycles of moon which you can be born under. And depending on what your auspice is, this will determine kind of your role within Guru society or the Guru nation. The auspice names and a single sentence overview are incoming now. Ragabash are born under the new moon and they are considered to be tricksters. Questioners of the old ways. A theurge is born under the crescent moon. They are shamans and they are more in contact with the spiritual world than anyone else. Philodox. They are born under the half moon and a philodox is a very good negotiator. During times of peace, a philodox is usually in leadership. Galliards are all about that fun, the wine, women, and song. They are the bards, the musicians, the thespians. They tell the tribe's stories and their ancestors live on through the tales they weave. The Arun, they are born under a full moon. These ones are the warriors. Generally, the most fierce warriors that the Guru Nation has, they typically take over from the Philodox when it's wartime. Now, I have done a deep dive into the auspices, so if you're interested in that, check this video out here after this one. Bane. They were born into the darkness, formed by it, molded by it. They're... it's a catch-all name for evil spirits. <laughs> In werewolf terminology, Banes can run the full spectrum of weak to extremely strong. Banes are frequently used to infect humans and animals. When this happens, they become a famori. More on them later. The more powerful the Bane, when they infest their host, the more of their personality is lost. What do you call a border around a cairn that is usually patrolled by werewolves when the word border isn't good enough for you? A bon. B-A-W-N. Bon. Breed is the term used when a werewolf is born, what form they were born into, whether it was homid, human, or lupus, wolf. Not three. Wolf. Two. <laughs> Now, I did use the word Cairn, not Karen. Karen. This is a sacred place to the Guru. This is where they meet, where they have spiritual ceremonies, where the moots happen. More on those later. A Cairn can also be corrupted and lost. When this happens, it is then referred to as a pit. The Black Spiral Dancers, they like a good old fashioned pit. 
They would refer to them as a hive, not a pit. The Guru, they don't really have gods per se, but if they did, they would refer to them as a Celestine. Celestine? C Celestine? Celestine? These are essentially very powerful spirits. Helios, Luna. These are examples of Celestines. Celestines. A hero of the White Howlers actually tricked the sun. They tricked Helios into ending their Ice Age. To learn more about that, click here. It should come as no surprise that the Guru have a hierarchy. They have ranks going from one to six, and only the extremely important, the ultimate legends of the Guru basically get to rank six. Rank one is Claith. Once you are accepted into a tribe, you are a Claith. You are then invited to the war parties. You can start to take on responsibilities and learn and introduce yourself to other members of the tribe. You are also entirely unknown. You are a nobody. Fostern. This is rank two. Adrin is the third rank that a Guru can achieve. As an Adrin, you are probably known in your general area. Tribes outside of where you exist probably haven't heard of you. Those who have achieved the rank of Adrin are less likely to frenzy. Rank four is Athro. And Athro is likely known throughout the Guru Nation, mostly by those in power, or at least some passing knowledge of your name. For those who achieve the rank of Elder, they will most likely be the leaders of different Cairns. Now, as I mentioned, only the rare Guru, the truly exceptional, will ever achieve rank six. This is the legendary status. Legends are spoken about with reverence. Their names are kept in the same places as Hercules or Joan of Arc. What is a concolation, I hear you not ask? That is a very large gathering of werewolf tribes. This is an exceptionally large moot. But instead of being limited to just a single tribe, many tribes show up to this one. Another word that is extremely important when it comes to werewolf terminology, that would be the Concord. The Concord was an agreement made by the Guru Nation to humanity, and it happened about 9,000 years ago. It's over 9,000! The Concord is the reason that the werewolves hide themselves from humanity, and it's also the reason the Impergium ended. Something else that's extremely common when talking about werewolves that would be corruption, also referred to as taint. <laughs> yes, taint. <laughs> corruption is a symptom. This is when too much accumulation happens from either the wild, the weaver, or the worm. A werewolf that has corruption can be cleansed is just not an easy thing to do. How do you do it, you ask? They basically have to go to Erebus and take a dip, whether they choose to do that themselves or someone pushes them in in the Molten Silver River. Erebus is kind of like Guru Hell. Did you know that all werewolves have five forms that they can assume? This is not necessarily true of all changing breeds. Some have less, but for the Guru, it is five. There is Hamid, Galabro, Krinos, Hispo, and Lupus. Hamid, it's basic. In my case, it's this pink skin flesh meat suit. Galabro is a little bit like Mr. Hyde from Jekyll and Hyde. You could pass for human in a very dark alley that's not well lit so no one can see your face. A guru in Galabro form, they're a little bit faster, they're a little bit stronger, they definitely hit harder. Krinos, some say Krinos, this is the final form of the werewolf. It's what we think about when you say the word werewolf. Thick skin, heavy fur, smells really bad when wet. The Hispo form is definitely a step down from Krinos, but it's not full wolf either. You're kind of like a dire wolf. The Lupus form is just the boring basic wolf form. A werewolf in Lupus form still has all of their intelligence, which has led to the death of many an unsuspecting hunter or poachers. Now, some of the werewolf forms, they can incite something called delirium. This is very important. It only affects humans, those who are unaware of the existence of supernaturals. Delirium is essentially the fight or flight instinct. Only you have to dial that fight or flight instinct up to 11. The Guru have many terms for many things inside of the spiritual world, the umbral realms. I'm going to try to cover many of these now. 
However, if I could ask you to do something that would help lift my own spirits... And what would that be? Well, if you could please hit that like button to let me know that you're enjoying the video today, that would be fantastic. And if you want to see more werewolf lore, more werewolf content from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification and you can get all of this. All right, kids, the first term that we're going to learn about the spirit world is anchorhead. An anchorhead is a gate between the spirit world and the deep umbral realms. These are very dangerous places. You should not go there because they are often guarded by very powerful spirits. Speaking of spirits, if you are to ask a spirit for a blessing, a favor, anything really, you better have a criminage. A criminage is a ritual payment for a spirit for services rendered, favors asked, gifts learned. The exact price of your criminage is determined basically through your negotiations with the spirit. Now, how do we get to a place where we can even talk to a spirit or even see one in the umbral realms? That would be through stepping sideways or reaching. When you are stepping sideways, when you are reaching into the umbral realms, you are not actually just stepping into the spiritual world. You are instead passing through the gauntlet, through the spiritual wall that separates these two realms. Now buckle up, this is where it starts to get a little weird. Directly overlapping our physical world, our material plane, is the spirit world, and this is known as the penumbra. That was the easy part. Now there are five known penumbras. The astral plane, which is linked to the high umbra. The Shadowlands, these are linked to the Dark Umbra. The Digital Web, this is a virtual reality realm, basically. It is known by the Virtual Adepts. The Dreamtime, this is linked to the Dreaming. And the Spirit Wilds, and this is kind of the Middle Umbra. The term Umbra, which I have said a lot, is used by the werewolves, again, a lot. It's kind of used interchangeably. However, the, most of the werewolves, when they use it, are generally referring to the spirit wilds or the middle umbra. The werewolves also call the umbra the spirit world, the shadow, sometimes the velvet shadow, the high umbra, the astral reaches as it is sometimes referred to. This is the realm of thought, the realm of idea. Mages, they travel here a lot. The middle umbra, this one is complex. Not only is it a realm to itself, but there are also pocket realms that can be found inside the Middle Umbra. The Middle Umbra is also notable for its presence or influence of the Triad, the Deep Umbra, the darkness of space, the area beyond our planet. It is a huge, immense, and dark void. Generally referred to as the area beyond the meteor belt in our own solar system, gas giants, planets that exist beyond here, they actually have their own spiritual realm in the Deep Umbra. These places are referred to as Shards or Shade Realm. While the Astral Reaches, the High Umbra and the Deep Umbra are technically different places, they exist independently. When it comes to the werewolves, they just refer to it all as the Deep Umbra or the High Umbra. There is no separation for them, but there actually is. This will lead us into the domains. Those are the mini pocket realms within the Umbra. A realm is just something with its own identity, its own concept that exists in the spiritual world. If you are looking for more information on the Umbra, you can check this video out up here. There is a term that is used to describe all changing breeds, not just the werewolves, but all of them. That is referred to as Fera. Let's talk about the Fomori real quick, or Fomor in their singular version. When a bane has infected its host to the point that it cannot be removed anymore, it is now a Fomor. Just like banes, Fomor powers can vary widely. Some Fomor are very weak, and some are very powerful like this one up here. Did you know that within World of Darkness, there is a hierarchy with these spirits? They also have their own names that go along with this, but uh, there is definitely a hierarchy within the spiritual realm. Gaflings are the first. They are the lowest ranking spiritual entity that you will encounter. The Jagling is the next one up from there. Gaflings are usually non-sentient and serving some kind of spiritual master, and quite frankly, they are happy to have the control of it. However, a jaggling 
is more sentient. They are able to make decisions on their own. They're still in the service of a more powerful spirit. The next rank up for spirits is a totem or a totem avatar. These are going to be very powerful spirits and they will generally be served by a gaffling or a jaggling. And Incarna is one of the most powerful spirits that a guru could run into. Not all of them are friendly. Many of them are able to teach very powerful gifts, very powerful rights to the werewolves if they feel inclined to do so. The ultimate stage, the final form, as it were, for spirits is a Celestian Avatar. This rank puts spirits basically in the same group as Gaia. Speaking of Gaia, she is one of the most powerful spirits known to exist. She is also quite possibly the first. She is credited with creating the Guru, for better or worse on that one. The Guru often think of Gaia as the cosmos, with the Earth being her most important place. There is a name that the werewolves use for themselves. I have said it many times before, and I will continue to say it many times in the future. This name is the Guru, the Guru Nation. Did you know that the werewolves, murderous war machines can actually fall into depression? This is called Hirano. While depression is an accurate depiction of what Hirano is, it's more serious. It is deeper and much more of a problem when it comes to the werewolves. The Guru in prehistoric times, they did a purge, a culling of humanity. This was called the Impergium. It is the reason that we fear the dark. The Red Talons are calling for a new Impergium, an Impergium 2.0 if you will. I have done a video talking about it. If you are curious, it's right here. Guru are werewolves, giant wolves basically. Wolves like to howl. Werewolves howl at the moon. Some of this howling is done as part of rituals. Some of this is done in celebration. Some of this is done in situations of great loss. A version of this is called kenning. What do you get when you're related to a werewolf, but not actually able to turn into one yourself? You carry on their bloodline. You are part of the heritage. This would make you a kinfolk. Kinfolk are not susceptible to the delirium that comes with seeing a Krinos werewolf. Krinos? Some of you say it is Krinos. All tribes within the Guru are very protective of their kinfolk. The laws of the Guru nation are ancient. All must hold the central code and take this to heart. This particular law is called the Litany. In its full form, the Litany would take hours to recite. Fun fact, four times a year the Fianna tribe get together as a whole and recite the Litany in its entirety. Do you know who Luna is? The werewolves most certainly do. Also referred to as Diana by some other supernatural groups, she is the spiritual embodiment of the moon herself. Luna's umbral home is in the ethereal realm itself. Luna is also a Celestian. Now, the thing with spirits when they attain this rank, they are literally attached to the thing that they represent. If you could destroy Luna in the spiritual world, you would literally destroy the moon itself. Luna is also the only way to get moon silver or path stones. And I'll talk about what those do in a minute. Do you know what a Metis is? What I sometimes refer to as Métis? This is a term for inbred werewolves, basically. One of the rules of the litany is werewolves are not allowed to reproduce with each other. Because when you do, you get a Metis, a Métis, a werewolf deformity. We know that these are going to be written out of Werewolf 5th Edition, so maybe this terminology is not going to be useful moving forward, but there you go. Werewolves can ride on moonbeams. Did you know this? This is called a moon bridge. These are paths through the mists of the Umbra. Any werewolf who touches the light of a moon bridge can find themselves hurling through space, hurling through the spirit realm itself, riding on a moonbeam. There is a slight difference between a moon path and a moon bridge. A moon bridge is between two different cairns. They can be spiritually linked and traveling between these cairns, even if it's a great distance, is pretty easy and fast. Moon paths just take you to a different place that's pretty much not a cairn. So how do you build a moon bridge or a moon path? This is where you need one of the path stones that are only acquirable from Luna. While Luna is the only spirit, the only entity that can create or bestow the path stones, they can only be found inside the Umbra. Werewolves have specific words for insults. Did you know this? Here's a couple of them. 
Feral, Mooncalf, Mule. The feral is a slang term for a lupus-born werewolf. A mooncalf is the word that they use to describe someone as basically an idiot. However, the mule, this is a derogatory term used to describe the metis. What are some other werewolf insults that you know about or like to use on a regular basis? Tell me about it in the comments below. Werewolves gather regularly for giant parties which they call moots. A moot can serve many functions, political, spiritual, religious, social. For werewolves of the Claith rank, these moots, these gatherings are essential to make connections. And for the werewolves that regularly miss these gatherings, they are considered social outcasts. Have you ever felt like you're being watched? Like the hairs on the back of your neck are standing up for no particular reason? That reality just isn't correct. Maybe you caught a shadow out of the corner of your eye, a shimmer like the heat coming off of the tarmac. That feeling you get when nails scrape down a chalkboard. If you've experienced this at all, you've probably been in the presence of a Nexus crawler. They are absolutely horrific, and if you want to learn more about them, you can click this video here. What do you call a group of werewolves? Well, it depends on how many there are. If there's about five or six, maybe less, you're probably dealing with a pack. If you have a group of packs together, this is referred to as a sept. A sept of werewolves can be found either protecting a cairn or protecting a specific territory that they hold. If it's not a cairn that they're protecting, this is known as a protectorate. So what happens to a werewolf if they don't attend the moots on a regular basis? What happens if they just choose to ignore the litany and live their life on their own terms? Most likely they will be considered a ronin. They are loners. They are social outcasts. They don't fit into a sept. They don't have a pack. They typically have a shorter lifespan than most of the other werewolves of the Guru Nation, which wasn't that long to begin with. Now, when it comes to items, holy relics, spiritual imbued things that the werewolves use, you're referring to one of two things. That would be talons or a fetish. No, it's not what you're thinking. YouTube censors, please don't turn off the channel. <laughs> Fetishes for werewolves are holy relics they take a very long time to imbue to harness a spirit inside of whatever it is they are also quite rare now in contrast you have the talon this is something that's relatively easy to use easier to acquire however it's pretty much only guaranteed one use spiritually totems are very important for the pack for a sept and even for the Karen, the totem is a fundamentally binding aspect, especially when we're talking about packs. It's even possible to have a totem on an individual level. When it comes to werewolf cosmology, the triat is basically everything. The triat, when it comes to the guru, at least in terms of what they believe, they are responsible for creation, for preservation, and ultimately destruction unbridled creation, order and continuation of life, and the end and destruction of that life, a natural cycle. The triad is made up of three parts, the wild, the weaver, and the worm, creation, order, and destruction. Now in werewolf cosmology, the weaver got very upset with the worm destroying its fun toys. It didn't like that very much, so it bound the worm so it couldn't destroy its things anymore. The worm went crazy and started to destroy everything instead of just finishing the cycle of life. But if you are interested in learning more about the triad and going a great deal of detail on these, you can click this video here. I have spoken a little bit about the tribes, but a guru who is born is not necessarily associated to the tribe that they were born to. Now a tribe, when it comes to the werewolves, these are essentially the same as clans for vampires. There are the Black Furies, Children of Gaia, the Fianna, to name a few. The tribes are also going to be getting a refresh when Werewolf 5th Edition comes out. The Veil is a poetic term for the false assumption that supernaturals don't exist. The Delirium also helps reinforce this. The Veil was formally instituted 9,000 years ago, yes, over 9,000 years ago, with the Concord that ended the Impergium. For all of the traditions that the werewolves have, and there are a lot of them, 
Many of the Guru just simply referred to them as the ways because trying to name specific ones is it's just too hard. It would be very common for elders to say something like this to new initiates, to Claiths, new Guru, make sure you follow the ways or I know the ways. Do you know what a wormhole is? And no, I'm not talking about the black thing in space. A wormhole is a place that has been spiritually defiled by the worm. It is basically a place of great corruption, something that's even more corrupted than a pit. What's your favorite werewolf word? One that I have either talked about or one that I haven't said yet. I have talked at great length about many words that the werewolves use, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. I would suggest clicking on this video here to learn more about the werewolf tribes. Thank you to all of my patrons for continuing to support me and the channel. This is likely going to be the last recording in this particular space until I get my studio set up. Thank you again, everyone, for your patience. This has been a very long video for myself. I hope this does well. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.